Hi there, this is Eve from Elohi, thinking of Petra today and feeling so grateful that our paths have crossed. She's such a gentle, sweet, kind soul, and I've loved every time she's come here. She's Elohi family now and forever, and um, just missing her and sending so much love to her family. So just wanting to send a little love pat from Elohi Pond where she's been many times. You'll remain forever in our heart, Petra. Hi there, my name is Marissa and I um, just wanted to express my sincere condolences and my love to Petra's family. Um, I met Petra several years ago at a retreat not sure if it was for yoga or for meditation, but I do recall, um, you know, Petra was quiet. Um, but the one thing that struck me about her before um, we officially met were her eyes. She just had this um, natural kindness that just came through in her eyes. And um, that really stuck with me. Um, as I did get to know Petra, the one thing that was obvious was the love for her family and especially her boys. Um, she just spoke with such pride and you can just tell she was just a really, really amazing mother. And as a mother myself, um, she's somebody that, you know, I looked up to and, um, and I certainly will miss Greeley. And I just want to send um, all of you my love and and Petra will certainly be missed by all of us. Take care. Hi, I'm Laura. I met Petra a few years ago at my first meditation retreat at Elohi. And um, we became good retreat friends. I think that I've been on retreat with Petra um, for three retreats, maybe four. And over the years, we started to request um, staying in the same cabin. So uh, I would have a lot of talks with Petra before um, dinner uh, or after a session. And we talked a lot about meditation she had this regular practice and was very consistent and I had some trouble with that and I would ask her for advice. Petra, how do you meditate every day? Um, how do you make it a habit in your life? And she would always smile at me and just and say, just do it because it works. And, um, and, and she was right, of course. Um, a couple of years ago, Petra had a few of us over for dinner, and um, your oldest son was there. Uh, I remember that he joined our group for some of the conversation, and he was so insightful and mature, and Petra spoke with him as if he was a young adult, but I thought he was much older than he was. Um, it was just sweet to watch their interaction. and. Um, so, you know, just as we did at retreats occasionally, uh, the yoga ladies, as my daughters would call us, just a small group of us would have just sat around talking about deep topics and meditation and yoga and the meaning of it all. And it was just very natural to talk with Petra about the big stuff because that's just, that was just a, a very natural conversation to have with her. Um, she was a very special part of our, uh, of our Sangha, of our group, and always will be. And um, wishing you a lot of love. Petra, this is in loving memory of you. This is something um, to commemorate the time that I myself got to spend with you, which was brief. We practiced together in the Mahapatha yoga community. I met you a little more personally at a retreat in Dahlonega. You were delighted with the uh, ukulele song 
that myself and Mina um, composed and performed. You loved your family. Uh, I definitely recall you speaking like your family was your thing, right? And um, your beautiful blue eyes, your beautiful spirit. You were spirit incarnate, you know, the, the, the softness of you, the sweetness of you, the kindness of you, and your um, willingness to put your attention on others. And I know I felt special when you chatted with me, you know, and I suspect um, everyone who had that experience felt similarly, that when you were present, you were very present. Um, I, I am, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, Petra's family, her two sons and her husband. I am sorry for your loss. And um, there is nothing that I could say other than, I mean, all I can say is you know of her beauty and you know of her strength and you know of her kindness. And I hope that that stays with you and inspires you to uh, make sure your mother lives on by carrying forward those traits if it's in your nature. And maybe if it's not, you could, you know, just remember, I think she would want you to, you know, to, to mourn and feel your sadness and, and understand that's an understandable thing. What you've been through is hard. It's impossible for anyone who hasn't been through it to even imagine. Let's face facts. And I... Um, Whenever the time comes, which is certainly not now, but when that time comes, I hope that you can, you know, celebrate her with whatever you choose to do with your lives on a daily basis. You know, I'm sure you still think of her all the time. And, of course, I hope that doesn't change. Only um, the hurt hopefully will subside and the the joy that you had her for the time that you did um, can possibly take root and grow. So, you know, my heart goes out to you. And, you know, I being not so close to Petra, but enough to have experienced her, can, um, you know, I, I, she was a wonderful, dear, kind, gentle, smart, strong, quietly fierce, I suspect, if I recall her practice, her actual practice was quite fierce, so um, blessings of love and compassion to you three, and um, you know, Petra will live on with all of us who, who knew and loved her, and if there's anything Mahapatha can do for you, um, I am confident that we would be happy to uh, lend support uh, for Petra's family. So, you know, many, many blessings of, of gentleness and compassion. Please be gentle with yourselves, okay? All right. Much love to you. Love you, Petra. I guess you could say that Petra was sort of like a low-key leader or a superhero almost in our yoga and spiritual community. Um, she didn't have the loudest voice and she didn't speak the most often, but when she did share her opinion or perspective on the practice or what she learned from the practice, it really always resonated with everyone. She had a special energy about her and anyone who was able to connect with her even for just a brief moment I think knows what I'm talking about. I I know I would always get like a special little spark whenever I knew she was going to be on the retreat that I was going on and that I was going to get to practice with her 
and hear what she had to say, um, her, her energy really just helped carry us along. And I think that it always will. And I, I, I'm just so happy for that. She's always gonna be a part of our community. Hi, so um, I'm Maggie. I'm, um, I would say, a good friend of Petra's, a student of Petra's, um, because I would say I learned so much from her in both her life uh, as well as her death, um, and I'm so grateful for her. Um, she was and continues to be a beautiful spirit. Um, I can't talk about her in the past tense because I don't believe that she's really gone. I think if our work has taught us anything, it's that um, people don't have to physically be here for you to feel a connection with them. Um, I was lucky enough to get to talk to Petra several days before uh, for several days before she died and I got to tell her I loved her which is true and I mentioned earlier that I've I've learned so much from her in both her life and her death and I think as as she was dying one of the things that I realized was that um, she reminded me where love comes from that it is this personal experience that comes from within, completely independent of what the other person is doing or thinking or feeling. If you, if you can let go of what it is that that other person is supposed to be doing to make you feel loved, you know, you realize that, that it, it's, it is this extraordinarily personal experience. Um, and it doesn't even matter if they live or die. So, Petra, I love you, and I still still feel you here. So, uh, Jai Bhagwan. Hi, my name is Melissa, and Gina is behind as the camera person right now. The three of us were dear friends, Petra, Gina, and I, Three amigos. When Doug suggested that we share something about Petra, I knew that writing my words down was the only way to get through it. I'm sad that we can't all be together in one place for this memorial, but I'm truly thankful that Doug has brought the community here to share stories and our love for Petra. Petra and I only knew each other for a relatively short time, but time is not the defining characteristic of our friendship. We met at B-Yoga a week or so before Doug's 2017 fall retreat. Upon learning that we were both going, we decided to ride up together to Elohi. I was a bit apprehensive about attending my first retreat of Doug's, actually my first retreat ever. And another friend, Jennifer Mitchell, she came with us and it would also be her first retreat with Doug. And as a matter of fact, she hadn't even ever attended any of his classes. Petra turned out to be the perfect companion for both of us for that two hour drive, putting us both at ease with her vast experiences from prior retreats and as a longtime student of Doug's. I felt instantly drawn to her calm, quiet, quiet and gentle nature, her thoughtful and generous spirit, and it didn't take long to form a bond that expanded our friendship outside of yoga to include our husbands, meeting her two boys, and even some of the other friends in her life at social gatherings in her home. As our yoga connection grew with every retreat, the classes, the main conversations, my admiration for her commitment and her spirituality, her understanding of Doug's teaching also grew. Opportunity after opportunity to learn from her, she expressed herself so eloquently with words, but could just as easily express herself without the need for them. I will miss my friend terribly, but she will forever remain one of my truest teachers from this life. And for that brief period of time that Petra was here, to me, her life had profound meaning. Namaste. 
Hi, my name is Gina, and as Melissa said, uh, we were the three amigos, me, Melissa, and Petra. Um, I met Petra back, I don't know, uh, I'd met her years ago, but then we reconnected over the winter treats that Doug started at Elahi in the first season. She and I roomed together, and when, then we really bonded. And like Melissa said, we bonded over Doug's teachings. I mean, we both really got it and understood it and were hungry for more. And so uh, we started to spend more time together. And then we, I met at Melissa um, a year or two later, and the three of us were... You know, we just bonded and we would do the retreats together. And the best part was when we would leave and we had all this time together in the car to talk about it and decompress from it and um, really assimilate the lessons. And it just really made it easier for us to leave and for us to go home and then, of course, long for the next one. But the biggest blessing is that we all became really good friends and we started to spend time outside of Doug's classes and outside of the retreats and um, we got to know each other on a more personal basis but we still would get together and what we talked about was the lessons and the teaching and uh, what Doug was wanting us to get and it was uh, it was pretty amazing and she got it she she was spot on uh, one of the winter retreats one of the fall retreats I just kind of had a breakdown and I I'm like, I'm not going back to class. I'm taking the rest of the afternoon off. Y'all can do whatever you want. I'm gonna lay by the pond. I've had enough. I can't do this anymore. And Petra just looked at me and she said, that's your ego talking. And I'm like, no, it's not. And she said, no, it is. And I went back to class and of course she was right. And we just laughed about it all the way home like, uh, like we would do. And it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be really hard going back to class and Petra not being there. The retreats, that's, 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 gonna, be, that's gonna be tough too. But um, she was wonderful and she was sweet and kind and she listened and she got it and we loved her and she loved us and, and she knew that we loved her and she knew what she meant to us and, and she, uh, she was special and she'll be missed. Namaste. Hi guys. Let me begin by saying I'm so honored to be a part of Petra's Celebration of Life. I uh, chose to do this video today in front of my three angels, one of my favorite pieces of art. And today that symbolizes Doug, Petra, and I. Because if it wasn't for Doug, our paths would have never crossed. Petra came into my life about six years ago. Unlike me, she was a quiet soul, somewhat shy, yet met me with a big smile each time we practiced together. So many fond memories to share, but I just want to focus on a couple of the many things that resonated with me. Through the years, there were several times that Gerald would meet her at the studio after class for lunch. Each time in the lobby, you could see the excitement of their time together. They would always leave holding hands a true testimony of their undying love for each other. In the past year, I was fortunate enough to have dinner with the two of them, and it became evident how happy and complete their lives were together, which makes my heart happy. Petra and I went on several retreats together. We chanted and danced, then ended the evenings gathered by the fire, singing songs from the past that none of us could remember the words. Petra would sit with her drum staying very focused on following along with the other musicians. What a pleasure it was to see her come out of her shell and shine. You could tell it was her happy place. Fortunately for me, I was able to see her in the last week of her life on earth. Her spirit remained strong, but her body was tired. Her three boys by her side forever. Very appropriate that she left us on Mother's Day because her boys were her world. She, she chose to let go that day. I believe in the circle of life and the time when we will all be together again. Until then, Petra, I hope you're feeling all the love from us. See you soon, my friend. Our love is never ending. Hey guys, so my name is Douglas Johnson and um, you could say I was I am Petra's spiritual teacher, and um, Petra has been a student of mine for many years. She's one of my oldest students, you might say. And um, 
she was many things to many people, as you heard in the comments that have come before mine. She was a mother, a wife, a friend, a member of our community. And she was all of these things, and yet none of these things really define her. Um, none of them can fully capture uh, who Petra was or what Petra was. So unlike some of the other people sharing in this video, uh, Petra and I didn't really have a personal relationship. Uh, our relationship was primarily of a spiritual teacher and student. One might think that this means that we weren't close, but I might argue that perhaps the student-teacher relationship is the most intimate relationship that's possible. It might be the last relationship you might say that we have before we realize who and what we really are, which you could say is one with everything. When we really understand this, the student and the teacher are not two, but also not one. They are different in a sense, and yet they are not separate. Petra and I spoke quite a bit in her last days in her body, maybe more than we had in all the years prior that I've known her. And what was beautiful is she was interested and willing and ready to continue doing her spiritual practice and work right up to the end of her life. She was turning to me and her spiritual practice and her spirituality to make it through what was potentially a very painful and difficult part of her life. And death is a part of life. No one doesn't die. So this is the reality. As, as painful as it might be for us and as much as we might want to see death as some kind of a mistake, as death as the opposite of life, death is not the opposite of life. Death is a part of life. And Petra approached her death in the same way that she approached every other part of her life, which was a very beautiful thing. Petra had a playful side, I think, that I want to bring out, because when we spoke, that really shone through. Even though she was tired and she was in pain, she was on drugs, um, she was ready to smile and laugh, and we laughed quite a bit when we spoke, even when we were talking about very serious things. And I really feel like this speaks to who Petra was as a personality, as a person, as an individual. Again, we have a side of us that is an individual, a form that we take, a personality that we take on, persona. But then there's another part of us that isn't that. And so her persona was, it had a playful side to it. I think she could maybe if you didn't know her very well, she might seem kind of serious and quiet and withdrawn in some ways, but she had this beautiful laugh and smile and playfulness that would come out. Another way to view Petra is as an embodiment of the three treasures. In Buddhism, the three treasures, also called the three jewels or three refuges, are the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha which can be translated as the teacher, the teaching, and the community. And so Petra was, in a sense, all of these things. She was a teacher, as you can tell from all of the testimonials and the people who shared in this video about how much they learned from her. Um, she embodied the teaching in so many of the lessons that she taught us 
especially on the last retreat that we were on with her, the last retreat that we did up till now, um, she brought some very powerful lessons uh, to that retreat that I think everyone there will remember for the rest of their lives. I know I certainly will. So both in sickness and in health, Petra was both teaching us and also bringing these lessons, bringing these teachings to the forefront, making them very real for us. Because it can be easy to talk about death, to talk about sickness in the abstract. And we might all nod our head and say, yes, yes. But it can be different when it's right there, when it's happening on a retreat that we're on, when it's one of our community and one of our friends, someone we really know and care about. So she did that for many of us. She brought us that gift uh, as part of her life. And then, of course, she was an active and vibrant uh, community member in the Mahapatha Yoga community. She enriched us with her, her presence, her humor, and she supported others on their path. She encouraged others to practice, and not because it was the right thing to do or this is what you should do, but I think because she had done the work herself and she had seen that it works, and she had experienced the freedom, the joy, and the peace that that could bring to one, and she simply wanted to share this with others. This is a sign of compassion. In this life, Petra was my student. And I've seen many students come and go over my 20 plus years of teaching spirituality. And I've seen the many different ways in which students try and relate with the teacher. Some successful and some not so successful. Petra was maybe the ideal example of the right relationship with the teacher, the teaching, and the community. She would ask the right questions when necessary. And they are often necessary on this path. I often wish more students would ask the right questions. But she was also not afraid to let her own experience give her the answer. And this often means putting questions aside and being willing to do the work to go inside oneself. She was very, very good at understanding spiritual pointers. So again, in my last exchanges with her, um, she would have fear coming up, which is very natural. Um, and especially as she began to lose her senses, her hearing and her sight were affected by the cancer. And she became afraid about not being able to see her family and connect with her family. And so we did some work around that. And she was able to very quickly uh, follow the directions and go inside and find, again, the answer for herself. And this is very important. It, it's nice to listen to someone else talk about spirituality, but that that isn't really what we need in our spiritual practice, in our um, life. We need to experience it ourselves, the truth of these teachings. And she was very good at doing that. So I can safely say Petra had the right relationship with her teacher, the teaching, and the community. And as a result, she got a lot from her spiritual practice. Um, she was, again, not afraid to do the hard work, and it very often is hard to realize our true nature, which is the true nature of all things, ultimately. But I can say her hard work paid off. This is evidenced by the fact that in private, Petra would share some of her spiritual revelations with me, and these are experiences that you may not believe if you had heard them. In the end, though, spirituality, even esoteric spirituality, like we practice in the Mahapatha Yoga community, 
It's not about particular spiritual experiences, as beautiful as they may be, as profound as they might be. Spirituality is ultimately about that which transcends all experiences. And that is what Petra is to me, because I believe that ultimately this is what she understood herself to be. Neem Kroli Baba, a famous spiritual teacher, leader, uh, once told his students that when you become my student and take hold of my hand, I never let go, even when you do. And when I heard this statement, it really summed up for me how I feel about my relationship with my students. Over the years, I've again had many students come and go. I've had some students reject me outright as a teacher and go from loving me to hating me. And no matter what their feelings about me, I never let go of their hand. I never stop loving them. And so Petra, as my student, I want to thank you for taking hold of my hand and for holding my hand now and forever. I love you. May your spirit be victorious. Jai Bhagwan.